Hi guys, welcome to Macna 2015. Yesterday I spoke about the Prodivio product, which I've been using since 2011, and I thought I'd share that same presentation with you on YouTube. Enjoy. Thank you very much. I want to thank you all for coming, and I wanted to just give you, uh, right out of the gate, I don't sell Prodivio. I am a hobbyist like you, and I've been using this product since 2011. So when they asked me if I would do a workshop on it, I said sure, because I've got a bunch of experience with it. So what you're seeing here are some of their product line that's available, and you can purchase these at your local fish store. You can also get them online. Uh, just type in Prodivio in Google, and you'll see all your choices. So that would be nice and easy. The point of Prodivio is a type of bacteria dosing. And you may have used other products in the past, like Microbacter 7, or Zeovid, or uh, you might have said, no, I'm just going to use straight vodka. And some people have used vinegar, some people have used sugar. Uh, Prodivio is a bunch of different bacteria combined in glass vials. And what's happening is it is adding extra bacteria to your tank to help with the natural filtration so that you don't have to rely on so much equipment necessarily. Um, just to give you a kind of a quick overview of my, my uh, reef, I have a 400 gallon tank that has a protein skimmer, it has a calcium reactor, and it has a refugium and a deep sand bed. And that's pretty much it for filtration. I do add from time to time a reactor filled with granulated activated carbon for water clarity. And uh, for a while there, I was running biopellets. Currently, I'm not. When you're using Prodivio, you're using it to help break down the waste that's accumulating in your tank, typically fish waste more than coral waste. Corals don't seem to waste as much into the tank as if you've ever run a frag tank, you don't have all kinds of water parameters coming out of whack, but when you add a bunch of fish to the frag tank, all of a sudden water changes are key. Here are the basics. These are the ones that I started with back in 2011, and you've got Biotin, Biodigest, Iodine, Strontium, and then Reef Booster, which is a micro food to be given to the tank. There are other products available now that have come out over the last couple of years. On the left is this device that will fit onto a sump that's rimless or a sump that has a rim. It allows you to connect these glass vials and drip the additive to your tank. It's, um, I've used one and it's kind of finicky. You have to really get it just right or a lot of it will trickle out quickly. It doesn't hurt your tank, but some of us like to add things very gradually into the system so there's not this cloud of chemical or cloud of bacteria just hitting your fish right in the face. So it's nice to be able to drip it in at a slow rate. The coral bits is vitamins, and you get a glass vial filled up with a number of different vitamins for your system, and some are water soluble and some are not. I've been using it somewhat. I picked up a, a box of it last year, and I think I've used it three times. You're supposed to use it regularly, but you know, it's like one of those things like, well, uh, I did use it. it. I didn't have anything bad happen, but I noticed my skimmer took a long time to get going again. It just kind of bubbled low in the neck, and you know. A day later it was back to it, but I kind of wanted it to be a little quicker, and it just seemed like a day was a long time. I mean, I didn't check the time. I guess what I should do is put it in again and really watch the markers and see what happens. But I noticed that it was kind of a little bit slow. They also have alkalinity and calcium supplements for those that are running like a nano tank. And you have the small tank and you're not dosing too far, well you could use this. For bigger tanks, it might not be as practical. You're going to rely on a lot more calcium and alkalinity needs for your tank. They also have stop ammo, which helps lock up the ammonia in the water. They have a product called Safe Travel, which would be ideal if you're moving from one part of the U.S. to another part of the U.S. and you're taking all your fish with you, and you can put this in the water to keep your fish safe during transport. Uh, it's not really good for you know, a quick trip from the fish store, but if you were visiting a city five hours away and you went into a fish store and you found that fish you've always wanted, you can put stop ammo in your I'm sorry, you put in a safe travel in your bag and let the fish just ferment in that on the way home, it'll be fine. And then chloral reset is to remove chloramines from the water. So if you're concerned about chloramines, it's a way of adding it safely to your system. So how often do you have to dose this? Every 15 days. That's why I like it, it's super easy. I know when you use Zeovit, you're having to do three drops of this on Monday, two drops of this on Tuesday, one drop of this plus one drop of that on Wednesday. And my friend had a spreadsheet with all the drops. He printed it and he taped it inside his cabinet door and every day he had to look to see what he had to add. And I was like, that sounds like so much work. I love this stuff. I just put it in the tank and I'm done. And I always do it on the 5th and the 20th. 
So if everyone in the U.S. did on the 5th and the 20th, that would be best. We could all send a G-Dose today. <laughs> it's uh, really easy to use. Oh, I was going to show you guys. I mean, can someone run out there and get me some kind of a pitcher or a vase or a, a jar of some water? That would be great. <clears throat> Something that's see-through. They need to be able to see through it, okay? Thank you very much. Okay. So I already said it's easy to use. Here, I try not to read slides to you, but I'm going to kind of cover some of these basics. The first thing, whenever you add anything to your aquarium, you should add it in an area of high flow. I like to put it in right in front of a power head. I have Vortec pumps. I have conductors that shoot water across the reef. And I can see the water just churning in front of it, and I pour in the churning spot so the cloud disperses quickly. Um, I also try to see where my fish are. Are they right there waiting for food? I don't want to pour it on top of a fish, just because I imagine what it would be like if somebody poured something on me that I wasn't expecting. So I try to think about my babies. Um, I like to stick to a schedule, and the 5th and the 20th worked out really well for me. They come in different sizes, from nano all the way up to normal size, or the average hobbyist, and then they have these really large vials for bigger tanks, and then they have super vials for the big systems, which is what I'm using now, because my system has 450 gallons of liquid volume. Uh, you can store it at room temperature, it doesn't have to go in the fridge, I just keep it on the shelf. And one of, I have a guest room that's just dedicated to my aquarium crap, and that guest room is filled with Pernivia and pumps, and, and you name it, I've got it. It's good to have some kind of a small bowl, or a bucket, or jar, or something handy, because as you're opening them, you're going to have little pieces, and you're going to have empty vials, you want to throw those away as you're going, instead of having to throw it across, it's a piece of glass, you're not throwing it across the room hoping to hit the trash can. So I keep a little bowl uh, right there where I'm working, or a small little cup, like the kind when you get those individual applesauces, I love those, they're like a hard plastic bowl, and I use them forever. I use those for melting fish food as well. And then finally, you want to make sure that you're dosing the proper amount, but the basic premise of Pradivio is you cannot overdose it. It works for all different types of reefs. I run a mixed reef with SPS and softies and LPS. So you're starting a brand new tank. You've got your box of water, you've got your sand, you've got your rock. A lot of people nowadays are using dry sand and they're using dry rock. There's no life in the tank whatsoever. And if you were doing that, you would want to use something like Startup, which is a combination of BioDigest and Stop Ammo. And what's happening is BioDigest is a vial that has about 15 different bacteria in it, and stop ammo is a way to lock up most of the ammonia in the system. And the way these two work together is the little bit of ammonia that is floating around to create that cycle, BioDigest is absorbing it and taking it and breeding and making more of itself. Now, since these items are sealed in a glass vial, you might wonder how are they even alive? All of the bacteria in those vials, and I ask these questions at the booth, and the booth is available for all your questions afterwards if you have any that I didn't cover. The, uh, the vials are sealed. They have argon gas that keeps them safe and stores the uh, bacteria in hibernation mode or sleep mode. And when you crack it open and you add it to your aquarium, well, it's a little small, but I can make, can you put some water in there, please? Water, yeah. Uh, when you add it to your system, your system has oxygen, and the oxygen activates all the bacteria, and it brings it to life, so it can start spreading through your system. After about a week of this stuff being in your system, you could at that point perform a water change, and you could then start running a maintenance dose, which is the regular Bioptim and BioDigest. And again, you're only talking about doing something every two weeks. It's very easy to remember, and it will get your system kick-started for you to start to begin to add livestock. It's very important, and I'm sure most of you are here know this, but when you're setting up an aquarium, there's an equilibrium you're trying to reach with the livestock, and you do not want to overstock a tank too quickly. It's really easy to look at a box of water and say, okay, I see sand, rock, let's fill it up. You know, like it's filled up with lemmings. And we have to add a little bit of fish, a few inverts, a few cleanup crew, and let the bacteria handle the load. Because if you, thank you very much, if you overdose and put a whole bunch of, um, of livestock in there, it will be more than the system can handle. And I'm from the old school way of using live rock, not dry rock. I like rock that came from the ocean that's filled with bacteria already, that's filled with sponges and worms and feather dusters and hitchhikers. I don't care. I don't worry about those hitchhikers. <laughs> so many people are like, kill it, kill it now, kill it with fire. And I'd much rather have some critters in my tank to help clean up because the ocean is not sterile. We're not setting up a museum piece, we're setting up a living biotope. <laughs> 
It's a very normal thing to do. The biotim, which is the second part of the maintenance dose, is the carbon source. It's kind of like adding sugar or vodka or something like that. I'm not saying that's what's in the vial. I actually don't know what's in there. But they work in conjunction with each other. So here are a couple different sized vials. The smaller one on the bottom, that's filled up with Reef Booster, which is the microfluid I mentioned. And that is designed for 50 gallons each. So if you had a 125 gallon tank, you'd use a couple of those. If you wanted to go a little crazy, you'd use three. It's okay, because you can't overdose it. The larger one is designed for 250 gallon and up. So that would, like the larger one would do my 280 gallon tank very nicely. I just put in one of each of the different types. Now, when we talk about bacteria in your system, you have a certain amount in the system, and you've got a, you know, we're talking about this new setup, a brand new tank. And you have the ammonia in there. And if you have tons of ammonia, the bacteria can't live. That's why you use the stop ammo to <coughs> lock up some of the ammonia. So really, like about 70% of it is locked up, and there's 30% floating around. And this comparison here is if I came to you and said, here, eat all these hamburgers in three minutes flat, how far would you get? It's just too much. It overwhelms you. you if you're like me, you eat one, and you're done. <laughs> and you're just sitting in hamburgers. But by locking up most of it, the bacteria are consuming the little bit available, and they're, they're breeding, and ammonia is continuing to cycle through the tank, and it's, it's always reaching a point of equilibrium. So the livestock, I'm sorry, the bacteria life in the tank is getting to that right point to handle this. So basically, you're, you're tripling out the ammonia to the bacteria that's waiting, and the bacteria is consuming it. That's the best way I can explain it. Now, this is the stuff I've been using since uh, I got my 400-gallon no, running. And I set up the tank with dry sand that I'd wash myself. I added a few bags of live sand that I purchased. Those are sealed bags full of critters. And I know some people debate, there's no life in a sealed bag that was sitting on a truck in 100 degree heat. It, again, it's the same principle. If they're in an oxygen deprived state, they're, um, they're dormant. And I went to one of them and, you know, I think it was Caribsy. I said, how do you know there's life in there? You know, Look at this bag, there's no air in there. And he said, have you ever bought brine shrimp before? And I said, well, yeah. I said, you ever bought brine shrimp eggs? I'm like, yes, I have. He said, they were dead, right? Just to... I said, yeah, they came in a coffee can that was metal. I had to use a can opener to open it. He said, and then you put it in salt water and it got oxygenated and they hatched. They came to life. I'm like, yes. And he's like, same principle. I'm like, all right, I can kind of accept that. But the proof is in the pudding. When I put live sand in an aquarium that's empty, that's brand new, and in a few days I see all kinds of bits of life on the glass, what I would see is little like white snowflakes. It's a type of a jellyfish hydroid. And they were all over the place. They're actually really pretty. And I would take my cleaning magnet and I'd clean off all these little guys off the glass. And as I'm working my way across the glass, they're back on the glass. It's hilarious. You just give up. And in a few days, they vanish. They just, I don't know where they go. I guess the filtration gets them or they starve to death, but they're gone. But that's part of the live sand that gets your system going. And so I definitely believe and recommend people to use bags of live sand. I, uh, in my 280 gallon system, twice a year I'd add one new bag of live sand to replenish the sand that was actually melting away. Um, because it's aragonite based, it's calcium based, and the lower levels of the deep sand bed are low pH and it can actually dissolve away and you have less and less sand and I replenish with a new bag of sand. So I always use a bag of live sand and that worked out really well in my system. These are the uh, five that I use. A uh, reef booster was the one that I took forever to decide if I wanted to actually put it in my tank because when you put it in, you get this huge white cloud. <clears throat> and I do have a video and I'm hoping it's gonna play. Um, here's my little shelf, let me just talk about that for a second. My tank is three feet wide, so I made this acrylic shelf that gives me a little work surface. It's really handy when I'm fragging corals or I need to put things down or take things out of the tank, I put them on a shelf. This holds all my prodivio, I have my little bowl, and as I break open my vials, I can go ahead and then throw the empty vials in the bowl and keep working, and none of those little pieces go anywhere. Now, this is really cold water, I've never done it in cold water before. This is the vitamins, this is stop ammo, I'm gonna find uh, this is bio kit for the nano system. We can use iodine. It's a good color. <laughs> now, if you're a fish, oh, wrong. Is they would work. Um, <clears throat> if your fish store doesn't carry this, you can go ahead and ask your store to bring it in. 
I use these like on autopilot, so I don't even actually look at them by heart. I just know what to put in. This is really good. The last one. It's gonna be the last one, right, Matt? <laughs> you packed it like that on purpose, didn't you? There we go. Okay, so you've got your little tiny vial, and I had a picture of it before, and there's also a little piece of airline tubing. And I'm going to show you how to open one up because, believe it or not, I've had people that didn't know how it worked. So you put your tube over the end, and you just snap it off, and it's open on one end. And then I would tell, people would tell me, well, I couldn't get anything out of it because there's a vacuum, so you see nothing comes out. So if you hold it over your tank and then snap off the other end, it just pours right out. And then what you can do, what I do, because I never waste anything, I then put it in the water and lift it up, put it in the water and I flush out the glass till the glass is totally clean, like every drop. And then once it stores around, it's essentially invisible. And that one little vial I just used was rated for 50 gallons of water and I just put it in like four ounces of water. So you want to be crystal clear, you won't see discoloration. Uh, this package here could last, depending on the size of your tank, could last you three, six months. It doesn't expire, it's not like you bought it and you gotta use it up by a certain date, like certain foods we buy. So here's a picture of my reef, this is back in 2014, and you can see there's rebellions and chalices, there's plenty of fish, um, Spock is in there, that's my NASA tank in the bottom right. She's been with me since 2004, she's lived through all of this. I've never had any issues at all using Prodivio on my system. And the corals have been growing beautifully. Now I talked to you about how you can't overdose, but I wanted to kind of get into how prove that I could actually make it happen. Uh, this is my mandarin from ORA. I was raised from an egg, and I was able to purchase it in 2011, I think, as well. And that behind her or him is my Nassau tank that looks like a whale by comparison. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Spock is massive. I've had people say they want to eat her. Now bottom left is a. Uh, Tubastria, it's a black sun coral, and then in the upper right is a bird's nest that just appeared on the side of a rock. And that happened four, three different times in my system, and each time it appeared, it never appeared on top. So it wasn't like I dropped a little twig accidentally. The colony is way over here, and then there was just this little piece that appeared halfway in the tank, three feet away, on the side of a rock. Like here's the rock, and it's sticking out. I'm like, how did that work? How is that possible? And this little guy grew into a nice little coral, and that happened in three different places. Uh, one of them didn't make it because the chalice said, oh no, no neighbors, and just killed it. Now, I said you can't overdose it because that's what I was told and that's what I believed. But I started running bio pellets at the same time I set up my new tank because I was trying to... I had done vodka dosing for three years, and I said, okay, with a new tank with a 400 gallon, I'm going to do bio pellets. I want to see what that's like. And I set it all up. I have an article about it explaining how it all works and how you should set it up. And I ran it totally fine in conjunction with Prodivio for a couple of years. The corals themselves were super healthy, totally fine. Notice this coral on the bottom left, because you're gonna see it again in a minute or so. Bright green Monty, the purple grape Monty, and then you can see some uh, kryptonite candy cane corals in the back. There's an Echinata acropora there. And it works with everything. There's not a certain livestock that would have a problem with Prodivio, so that's nice to know. I've run it with all these different types of livestock. I've never put it in and the next day something was dead. I've never put it in and lost a coral. You know, it, it literally is a non-item. It's just something I just do. It just goes in my system. Uh, you can see even sponge grows well in the tank. That's some white sponge sticking out. And this is reef booster. <clears throat> I really should find that video for it really fast. Okay, I'm going to skip ahead and hopefully everything will cooperate. So here's my reef. Um, <clears throat> this is probably 2011. So I'm shaking it up because Reef Booster, when you open it up, it looks like two colors. Shake it up so it's completely combined. And then when you put my well, right there, let me speed this up just right here. It's kind of boring you to death. So I put it in in front of the conductor, and you can see it shooting into the system. Now this is a microfluid, so my protein skimmer would be turned off. You can still run everything else. If you're running carbon, you could desist if you wanted to. Um, I prefer to leave everything running except for the skimmer. And as you can see, the tank becomes one big white cloud. 
that's just micro food. And I was telling Nicholas that I'm scared of this stuff. It's just, it's insane. It makes my tank you know, opaque. It's like, it's totally fine, Mark. And I was like, oh. So I thought, all right, I'll film it. <laughs> so I thought it was kind of cool because when you saw it, you could also see how the flow went through the tank and moved the food everywhere. But what I've chosen to do is I feed this at night when my fish are asleep. I guess, again, I, I put way too much emphasis on what my fish are thinking. And when I pour this cloud in and they all seem freaked out and scared, I'm like, oh, my poor fish. So what I do, <clears throat> I wait for them to all park in their little holes for the night, and then I pour it in and let the tank just do its thing. When you add this to the system, what'll happen is your water will, the water tension will change, and so the water going down the drains will become very loud. So if you're trying to sleep at night near your aquarium, you might want to use it at night. You might want to use it when you're hitting to work. That's your, you know, whatever works best for you. But it's pretty loud because you have changed the way it's falling down the drains, and it just, you just hear it just boiling away as it's going through the system. It's just a sound thing. Now, some people like absolute silence. So you get the idea. Um, this video shows how it goes away over time. So you see 60 minutes later, it's a little bit more clear. I'm just going to jump ahead just a couple times. So here, two hours later. And again, no skimmers turned on. So this is being taken up by the system. And then about three to four hours, I can't remember how long this video, you know, what period I covered in this video, but you can see it's mostly gone. At that point, you turn your skimmer on. And your skimmer may not even start taking anything out at first because of what's still residual in the system. Okay. So all the LPS corals in your system will be able to take up that food easily. I'm not going to tell you that the fish take it up, but I mean, they're swimming through it, so they might inhale some. And uh, here's a Leptastria that's thick and happy. I love my SPS and I love my LPS. I tend to run both. I can't seem to just pick one. There's Spock. And you can see the, uh, this bacteria does not affect a refugium at all. I grow plenty of macroalgae. I've been growing it for years in the, in the refugium zone in my sump. And the plants grow and I can harvest them out as desired, which I don't really think about it too often. Usually what happens is the local fish store says, do you have any, I have a customer that needs some. I'm like, yeah, sure. And I rip out a handful or somebody buys a sump for me and I'm like, here's for your refugium when, when they've got it ready. And that's usually when I pull it out. It's not like, you know, you're supposed to take it out every three or four weeks. I just enjoy looking at the plants growing there. I like to get on my belly and look at the bugs running around, the sponges growing, and the feather dusters. It's fun. So here's the tank in January of uh, 2014. You can just kind of put that in the back of your mind. Um, because you'll see another picture of it here in a few minutes. So then, what about when you overdose? The bottom right coral was my beautiful, gorgeous, crazy neon green monopora. And then something weird happened in my system, and I couldn't understand it at first. And that coral had turned basically brown. And I noticed as I looked through the tank that a lot of the green had vanished. Remember that Monty I told you to notice earlier? It's almost completely brown, there's a little hint of green left. Uh, even that scroll coral to its left, that's usually a vivid yellow, was pretty drab looking. And there's my bipolar reactor. That reactor's huge, it's from Next Reef, it's their biggest one, and it had 2,000 milliliters of bio pellets in it, which is a lot, but it would last like a year. It would just slowly come down, and it worked great. I did this for a couple of years. So how did I overdose? What did I do wrong? Here's a war coral that looks like mud. It's horrible, all the color was gone. And so what had happened was, Prodivio came out with a new size, and they supplied me with the uh, BioClean, the BioDigest, and here you can try this out with your system. It's even nicer and easier to add. And I looked at the packages, and on the front and the bottom there, it said for 250 gallon tanks. And so I thought, well, I have 450, so I'll need two of each, and I put that in my system. And I had put in two of the new vial in my tank probably three times in 45 days, and the tank was just going downhill. And if you look at the vials, you can see the one in the front was my normal one that was for 250 gallons. And the one behind it wasn't double the size, but it was a little bit bigger. When I look at the words on there, it says BioDigest Pro 10 and BioDigest Pro 10. It didn't say Pro 12, Pro 15. <laughs> it didn't say anything that it's more, just that there was a little bit more liquid. So I thought, all right, I'll just use it. But then when my tank started going to hell, basically, I thought I've got to find out what's happening. And so I started looking at the package more closely. And on the back of it, the one for the small vial said one ampule for 250 gallons, and the big ampule for 500 gallons. And I put in two, so I put in enough for 1,000 gallons. And even then, in my head, you can't overdose Prodivio, so that can't be it. But what was also happening, and I have no picture, so I'm just going to have to paint this picture in your mind, 
I had my biopod reactor with a tube that went straight out and into the intake of the skimmer. And that's how you're supposed to set it up. So as the dead bacteria coming out from the biopod reactor is instantly skimmed right out of the system and keeps it out of your, your tank. That's how I've been running it for years, never had a problem. But the biopods went down really fast. I mean, I just watched them go down, 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 down. When I first ran bio pellets, I put a piece of tape on the reactor just so I could compare, say, oh, I'm down a quarter of an inch, okay. And I could actually, that's how I knew if I'd used any. But now it's just going down daily, and in four weeks, I'd used up the entire reactor, and my skin mate looked like pudding. It was thick, thick pudding in the collection cup, and it wouldn't go down the waste hose to the waste collector, and if something was going on, I took the collection cup off, it's this big around, and I take it to my sink, and I'm taking your credit card to scrape it out. And I'm looking at it in the sink. Will this go down the drain? It was like jello. I'm like, oh my God, what is this stuff? And this was all happening right before Magna. So I, when I got to Magna, I went up to Nicholas in the Prodivia booth. And I said, here's my situation. And I need you to give me some input. What do you think is going on? And I explained to him about how the... Uh, the vials appear to be marked differently in the front of the package, how my biopellets have burned up, how my skimmate looked like pudding, which in a way was good. The skim was pulling it all out really fast. So in my brain, the toxicity that I imagined was happening, even though really it was bacteria, a lot of it was being exported instantly, and only a little bit was hitting the system. That's why it wasn't a system-wide crash. I just had some corals lose their color, while other ones looked fine, and the fish looked fine, and the numbers, the parameters, everything was fine. I'd measured everything out with any calcium, magnesium. I thought magnesium was dropped. That's why I'm losing these corals, you know, or losing their color. Everything measured perfectly. I thought, this is insane. So I, I talked with him, and I said, I think that I overdosed protein. I was like, you can't overdose it. <laughs> and then the next day he ran up to me and he said, you know, I couldn't sleep last night. I was thinking about your tank. And he said, I believe because you run bio pellets, you created a supercharged environment. Sort of like a nuclear reactor <laughs> under your tank, is the way I interpreted his words. And he's had a thick French accent, so you never really know what he said. No! <laughs> He's right here in the front. <laughs> uh, but so what I did was I took the bio pellets offline as soon as I got home. But the problem was I just dosed two more vials of everything before Magna. So I put in another hit. And I was like, oh. So I said, okay, I'm not gonna go ahead and put any more Prodivia in my tank for a while. Let the bacteria get back down to normal levels because it worked fine for two years. And it's something I did. I put in too much. I removed the vial pellets or stopped in Prodivia. I did some water changes. My tank is big, 450 gallons of liquid volume because I have it with a, another tank and a frag tank and a sump. I got 450 gallons of liquid. And I did 50 gallon water changes um, every three or four days. And I did this probably, probably about four or five times. So over two weeks, I just took out little bits of water and put more in, and I didn't touch anything. I left it alone and just let it heal. And I knew in my head, being probably as long as I have, I, I started in 1998, I knew that these corals were distressed, but they weren't dead. And I knew if I leave them alone and get things right, they'll heal. And I knew it would probably take eight to 12 weeks. And that's exactly what happened. After about nine weeks, I started seeing some really cool stuff in the tank. That coral right there is like, first of all, I call it the unknown coral because I don't know what it is. I think it's an Acropora velita, but I'm not positive. But it's always brown in my tank. And it finally turns something pretty. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. And I was really pleased to see that. And then look at the Cephastria. The, normally the Cephastria has a green skin and all of a sudden it had this bright blue going through it like lightning or electricity. I was like, that's beautiful. And then that Monopora grew this green rim. And I was like, man, I could sell this for so much money right now. And then I started thinking about these coral sellers. And I went, do they dip their stuff in high pH to get a good color so we'll buy it? And then it goes back to normal. That's just a theory. I have no idea. But, uh, you know, it just seems like we see these new corals. I've never seen one like that before. I was like, did they do something with Prodivia? <laughs> No, uh, but it was really a nice change of pace to see these, cor these corals with the vivid colors coming back. And I went back to dosing Prodigio again every 15 days again. I chose not to do the biopellets for the last year. I wanted to see what it would be like without. And because, you know, the idea is you can just use Prodigio and not run biopellets. That's part of the premise that it will take care of your nitrate and phosphate. Well, I feed my tank a lot, like three times a day. I feed all the time. My babies, I like them full of food. I'm constantly putting in nori, I'm dropping in frozen food, I have auto feeders dropping in flake food, and no one's hungry in my system. I fill all those little mouths and I know they're pooping all of my corals, my corals are all eating that. 
And I do my water changes every six to eight weeks if I feel like it. And I really, I hate water changes, even though I've got it set up to where I can turn a couple of knobs. I don't even want to do that. Just leave it alone. I try to keep my hands out of the tank. I don't touch things. I, I go in there occasionally to do something, like pull something out or lift something off. But I'm not constantly tinkering with it. And uh, so I just let it kind of heal. And then I've noticed since then, you know, nitrates are up a little bit in the tank, which they weren't before. So the deep sand and refugium are not enough to remove it. And in my case, because of all the heavy feedings, Prodivio can't remove it all, because I just feed so much. But I, it's not a problem, my corals are all growing, you'll see another picture in a moment. It's just my nitrates have risen a little bit, and so my bird's nest coral that should have pointy tips, they're dull, they're rounded over. And that's how I know when nitrates are up by living in a bird's nest. It's easier than pulling out a test kit. And uh, when I get my water just perfect, I have pointy, sharp bird's nests again. So I know I got them down again. But I see new growth on the side of Bogota cup. Um, you can see up close on the corals, they're super healthy and they're vivid and they're strong. This uh, chalice right here was one of my favorites. I grew it to be about, I don't know, is that 23 inches? Well, it was about that big of a tank. And uh, I had a huge Aqualandia swing and that thing just went up like smoke. And then here is a uh, red planet and it's puddling onto the rock, so you can see how the growth does really well when the system's all in the correct way. Even my greens return. That one on the bottom is actually a monophore from SeaWorld San Antonio, and it had turned brown, and it has blue polyps, and the blue polyps were like barely blue, and the green was brown, and now the green has returned. So here's my tank from last week, and I know it's not the perfect look, you know, because it's on a projected screen, but I also have another, how are we doing on time? What time is it? You have five minutes. I have five, perfect. I have a five minute video. Um, let me just see what the next slide is. Okay, there's a close up. And one more of this aquifer is doing really well. And okay, so that's this. So let me get the video now. So this is the video I shared on my YouTube uh, about two weeks ago. And basically it's about four or five minutes long. And it just kind of gives you a bird's eye view of the tank from a couple different angles. Um, at this point, I can answer any questions since I have five minutes left. Do you have a question? I'll try to answer it. Yes? Is this, is this considered a well balanced system? Where we're running from this low flow Well, I wouldn't say so, no. You know, you're, I'm not trying to do that. That's what Zeobit was definitely trying to do, is have super low nutrients. <coughs> what Pradivio does, besides add the bacteria to the system, it does add better water clarity. And people come over and they do notice that the water's so clear and they ask, what do you do? And they're looking for filter sauce. They're looking for pads. They're looking for, I don't know, bio balls. And no, I have none of that. My whole system is free-flowing water. There's nothing to trap particulates. And I look at particulates as a thing that something can eat. If something blows in the tank, I know a fish will either eat it and spit it out, or a coral will catch it, or it'll land in the rock work. And I run Vortec pumps to move the flow through the system, and the Vortex have the ability to do nutrient export mode, where they kind of churn everything up for 20 minutes, 30 minutes in a row. And that right there is what pulls it back out of the system. So I don't have that kind of problem. I'm not a fan of filter socks, and never have been, because I don't like cleaning them every three days for the rest of my life. And I know that when you put a sock into your sump and you feed your tank and the food sits in the sock and rots, you're adding to phosphate and nitrate until you remove that sock. So the longer it's there, the more you're going to add to nutrients. Another question? Yes? Do you do a super video in your anemone tank? The anemone tank is part of my form. Oh, it's right. all tied together. I pour it in the tub in front of those conductors and let it just shoot. And I make sure Spock isn't waiting because she gets right in front of there. She thinks it's always food. And I, I guess she's got me trained. Yeah, they're tied together. He asked if, it was, uh, if I was dosing the anemone cube. So the anemones, which you're going to see in a moment here, are also getting the same product. And in this cube, if you look kind of closely, you'll notice there's quite a few clownfish. There are 17 in there right now. And I got them from a breeder who was actually featured on my channel, uh, Tammy's Reef. And she has an 800 gallon tank and she raised all these clowns. And I said, you know, I've got all these anemones. I need a bunch of clowns. Bring me 40. And a friend of mine's like, don't get 40, that's crazy. So I talked to another breeder and said, what do you think about me putting 40 clownfish in this cube? He said, you can't do it long term. And I said, all right. So I told her, bring me 20. And so she went through and she grabbed all the biggest ones. And they were about six months old. And uh, they're awesome. 
you'll see it from another angle here. I did about a minute from each side. And they're really adorable. And the coolest thing about the story with the clownfish, and I haven't even shared this on YouTube yet, is that there was a female clown that was all by herself and she was being super timid and hiding all the time. And when I, when Tammy actually added these clownfish, she poured them in really slowly, three of them swam right up to the mama and they kissed her body. And they didn't dance, they kissed it. They were just like, kiss, kiss, kiss. And she was like, hi. And she got along with all of them. And they're super excited to swim me everywhere. And she's kind of like, there's a lot of you guys here. And then after a while, and now she comes out and she comes, she still seems to be timid. Like if I get near the tank to feed, she'll like dart to the back even though the food's coming in. But she, she came out of her shell with all these new guys in there. Another question? Yes. When you go away, mm -hmm. does your tank self-maintain or do you have somebody come in and feed you? Well, the whole system is automated. But I have a tank sitter every time I leave town. And it's something I totally trust with my home, my alarm, my business, and my tank. And he is really good to a, to a crazy level. He'll say, hey, your calcium reactor is messed up, so I took it apart and rebuilt it. I'm like, okay, <laughs> thank you. He's like, yeah, I wasn't doing such and such. Okay, thank you. And, but he's really good about my reef. He keeps an eye on things. He doesn't mess with it. You know, he does occasionally say, oh yeah, you lost a frag. It'll be this colony turned white. I'm like, it's not a frag. You know, and he's like, well, you know, your tank. Yeah, right. But uh, he's super handy. He's there. And I, like last night, I got a text from the Apex saying it hasn't had communication with you know, the internet in an hour. And then another sex came through. I haven't heard from your Apex in two hours. I haven't heard from in eight hours. We're not going to try anymore because that's a system that Russ M created for us. So I texted my tanks over this morning and said, well, there might have been a power outage. But I used my alarm system. It has a couple of cameras pointed at the tank. And I, the water was moving. The fish were swimming. So I don't know. He might have rebooted my Apex when he got over because earlier I got a text saying, your Apex is off. And I said, OK, I think he unpowered it to maybe reboot it. So then maybe I can start talking to it and check on the tank. But he comes once a day, and his job is to feed the fish. Even though there's auto feeders, I like him to put in food and make sure everyone gets something in their mouth. And he makes sure everything's running right, and then he'll call or text me if there's a problem. And I also, before I left town, I refilled a huge container of salt water in case there was an emergency, and there's 250 gallons of salt water available for like a massive change. Yes? You say it's not a ULMS system, but where do you keep your nitrates? <laughs> well, I should test them again, but the last time I tested was about four weeks ago, and I think they were, I'm trying to remember, I feel like they're around 10 to 15. I like zero. I love a test kit that's yellow. It's like, yes, I did. And when I did vodka dosing, it took a long time to bring, I had nitrates at 80 and didn't even know it. I was reading the kit wrong forever, and Hubby from Salaford's like, you're still doing this test wrong. And I was like, how am I supposed to do it? You're supposed to look from above, because now you look from the side, or you don't look from, I don't know, whatever it was, it was the opposite. And I had a friend test my water with his really expensive kit. He goes, yep, yeah, you're 75 or 80. I'm like, wow. So I dosed vodka for a long time. That was back when you asked me if I would use per video. And I thought, man, my tank's not a good candidate right now. I got all this weird stuff going on. And I got it down to zero and kept it down. And when I set up the new tank, it was at zero and it kept down. So let me pull up that one more time for you guys. In case you just need to like save it for yourself. So this is just uh, the three sources, obviously Prodavio.com is where you can read up on the products. They're based out of France, but they have a huge uh, American side. And they come to every Macna, and they've got a booth. When you first walk through the doors, you just walk straight to the back. I mean, just walk straight, and then take a left, and it's right there, and you can ask them 100 questions, and they'll answer them all. And uh, that's what I do. I go in and ask my questions there. I always try to ask questions of the source, and I recommend that to any hobbyist. When people say, hey, I bought this RODI system, how do I set it up to the general public? Did you contact the person that sold you that system or the, the company that makes it? And they're like, no. And I just feel like you should always go to the source, whoever's behind it, and let them explain it to you. Now, if they can't answer your question, that's different. I think I'm probably out of time. Let's one last question. Is there one more hand? Ha! Perfect. No more hands. Thank you very much for your attention.